Okay, let's talk about seeds and fruit. So um, in the last video we did about double fertilisation. And so this is what kind of happens after that. So the ovary uh, becomes the fruit and here we see uh, this is a, actually a sugar snap pea because I couldn't get any broad beans. And this outer, the pod bit, what we would call a pod, is the ovary. So after fertilisation the ovary is going to become the fruit. So this is the fruit of a sugar snap pea. Um, if we open it up, we're going to put it shelling peas, obviously, lost the knack. We can see that we have a number of, oh look, that one's germinating, pea seeds inside. So the pea seed has developed from the ovule and the ovule consisted of an embryo sac with the nuclei in it and the integuments pierced by a micropyle. Now just while I've got this pea pod open, this bit here is called the funicle and it actually attaches the pea to the pod and therefore to a nutrient supply. And then we can see that, um, well, I've lost one, that there are a number of ovules inside this ovary. So peas sort of have a long keel shaped flower and the ovary is long and it's got more than one ovule in. So each one of these to form a pea seed has been fertilised. So if we look at the pea seed itself more closely, you can see the part where it was attached to the funicle which is called the hilum, and underneath that you've got the micropyle, that's that, still that little pore, that little hole in through the integuments which have now made a tester. So I'm just going to get this bigger pea out of here. So the tester I'm hoping I can remove, and so there we go, you can see that it's, it's like a little skin around the outside of the pea seed and therefore it's got a protective function that's involved in maintaining dormancy and keeping things out and preventing desiccation. If I peel away very carefully, I'm not sure this is actually going to work but give it a whirl, if you peel away very carefully you can see this sort of um, this feature here, that's actually the radical of the embryo plant. I'm hoping to peel that away quite carefully and expose the embryo. Probably should have done a blue peter and done one earlier. Give it a whirl. Ooh. Obviously you can try this at home. Oh, look at that. That's super, isn't it? Oh yeah, Dr. Savile's really admiring this. This is super. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is the radical, this is the part of the embryo that is actually going to become the root and if I sort of now split it into its two cotyledons. So the, em the endosperm, the thing that was formed of that triploid nucleus in the pea and bean family is Oh, that's so lovely. Um, is absorbed into two cotyledons. These are sort of storage leaves. Uh, they're not true leaves. They don't do photosynthesis when they emerge. And here we've got the the rest of the embryo. So this bit here, these two bits are going to one for each leaf are going to absorb the nutrients from the cotyledons which was the endosperm and they're going this these two bits here are going to form the first true leaves so this is the plumule of the plant um, and the outside of the cotyledons and it's again it's a, it's a layer so you can't see it it's a layer of cells right around the outside of the cotyledons we've got the alurone layer that releases gibberellins um, and that causes amylase to be released 
and therefore the starch and uh, presumably proteases to be released as well, the starch and proteins to break down and those products can then be absorbed <coughs> by the radical and the plumule. So oh, that's super, I'm really pleased the way that worked out, much better than the bean. Anyway, just to simplify things, I make things a little bit bigger, peas are a little bit small. I've done a drawing of a bean seed here, so this is a very typical sort of drawing that you might get, a diagram that you might get in the exam. So here we have the hilum, where the bean was attached to the pod. Underneath that, the micropyle. The micropyle's role in sort of making a seed into a seedling is to imbibe water. So it takes in water through the micropyle. Uh, then we can mobilise the enzymes and start the germination process. And as we can see, as we could see from our little pea seed, the radical is going to be the first thing out. It's going to grow down into the soil and carry on that sort of taking in water and taking in mineral ions. We've got the test around the outside, a protective function derived from the integuments of the uh, ovule. I've done my embryo here. Plumule going to be the shoot, radical going to be first out though, um, out of the tester and forming the root. And then the endosperm effectively absorbed into these two cotyledons, these seed leaves, which are storing the food. So they're derived from uh, the endosperm tissue. And round the outside, and it's a little bit thicker in this, is the alurone layer. That's the role of the alurone layer is to release gibberellins. Now, gibberellins are a plant hormone and their role is to break that dormancy of the seed when the conditions are perfect in terms of temperature, in terms of uh, water availability and oxygen availability. So you will remember at primary school, I'm sure, growing cress seeds in a number of places, so some dry and on but with light and some cold and some on a window ledge and you varied all these conditions to see which ones would grow and they will only, you'll only get a cress seed plant or any other sort of plant if the conditions are perfect and they've got oxygen for respiration, they've got um, a suitable temperature for enzyme action and germination to happen and uh, and they've got a suitable amount of water to release those enzymes into solution. So, bean seeds on your syllabus, so you should definitely know the structure of the bean seed. And the other seed that's on is a maize seed. Now, this is the yellow stuff on corn on the cob, um, which you'll become increasingly familiar with as we're doing genetics. And the, the maize seed is sort of slightly different. Each one maize seed, so our, our pea and beans, have one flower um, and lots of ovules inside the ovary to produce our seeds. But maize seeds are different in that the flower, each individual flower on a maize, on a corn on a cob plant, produces one single maize seed. So each one of these this thing that I've marked the tester is actually the tester plus the ovary that are fused together, the pericarp you'll see it called. And it's kind of split into two inside and uh, sadly I couldn't find any corn on the cob fresh yesterday to bring one in to show you. But they're split into two. In this half, so this is the bit that's attached to the, the bit that's left behind when you know cartoon animals have eaten it, um, we've got the cotyledon and a plumule and a radical. Now because these are monocotyledons they have one cotyledon per seed and the plumule is, um, is surrounded by sort of grass-like grass sheath leaves um, so it's going to sort of grow up in a, a spike rather than doing that when it emerges. We've got the endosperm, so the endosperm and the cotyledons are separated and the endosperm is surrounded by the alurone layer, again, to release that hormone to break the dormancy. So I'm going to go and eat the rest of the sugar snap peas now and um, enjoy.